Hey, we're continuing on with our SolidWorks for Makers series. A quick recap from the last video, Jason Poole is taking us through an actual project he recently worked on for us. He started his modeling in X shape to go through his concept sketch and make it into this awesome 3D model of a fishing lure. Now, what he needs at this point is to make some traditional CAD features on the model so it can be manufactured and assembled. That's where SolidWorks is gonna be the best tool for the job. Yeah, that's right. It's absolutely the best tool for this job. What I want to do is just add some sketches and some features to this and pour a little bit of engineering in this because it's important to me that this fishing lure has a little bit of wiggle waggle to it as it swims across the open water. That's pretty cool. Now, I think I know what you mean with wiggle waggle as it's swimming, but I uh, can't wait to see what you're what you're getting into here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's jump into SolidWorks. So the first thing I do is new part, and then I just click on the compass. I type in cranky001. Uh, that's what I named the file in Xshape. There it is. I just drag and drop it right into SolidWorks. Okay, so what you've done right there is create a link between that model that's made in Xshape and this new model where you're going to put your SolidWorks features. So like if you want to make sketches and cuts and extrudes, you're going to edit this part. And then if you want to change the subdivisional part down the line, you're going to edit the part in X shape. Right, right. And that it was just so cool that, you know, it just opens right up, even though I made yeah. it in X shape. It, it's just great how how they communicate back and forth and, and can open up the parts. So like you said, now you're, you're in SolidWorks, you're going to make a few a few different features. The, the specifics of those are going to vary according to project by project, right? But totally. um, you said wiggle waggle and you need, you need it to get, uh, I think of some kind of movement. You're talking about it swimming and looking like that. Um, you know, that's what you're gonna be, what you're gonna be doing here. So basically what I wanna do here is I just wanna create uh, two simple hinges so that this whole wow. body is from one solid body to three. I want a head, a midsection and a tail and I just wanted all to rotate uh, around a pin, just kind of similar to a door hinge, right? Okay, I think I see what you're talking about there. So yeah, you're gonna make some extrudes, you're gonna cut, um, you're gonna cut some things, and then uh, you know make some some hinges in between these two, in the, between the parts. That's right. That's right. So the first thing I do is extrude this in half. It's a lot easier to work with just half of the model because I know at the end I can always mirror it over. Uh, and then I, I grab some arcs, I sketch them in there, offset them real quick, and then just blast those through with an extruded cut. Now I have three separate bodies, right? Good good technique to use. Um, yeah. And you know, this is just how I do it. I'm sure it's done a billion different ways, but I added a sketch and I'm just gonna cut that in uh, real quick. And then I'm gonna add uh, another sketch which is basically this uh, this box that I just created offset in a little bit. So it has a little bit of space in there so that when it pivots, it doesn't have collision issues. And this one, I'm actually gonna do an extruded boss. And I'm gonna make sure I check merge results. And now I still have uh, three bodies, but this one has like a, uh, a little nub sticking out of it, right? So now you can start to see, you know, where okay. I'm going. Uh, I'm doing an extruded cut here again with just this circle. That's going to be like the pin or the axle, you know, that everything's going right. to rotate around. And I'm going to do that same technique twice, once on the tail too. So I have, you know, my one, two, three part with the wiggle waggle. One yeah, extreme so wiggle waggle here, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, this, these are the kind of things though, when you think about it like okay this doesn't make sense to do in x shape it's it's somewhat precise you want a thirty thousandths offset or whatever so that you're consistent right. there you want a circular pin you want a hinge that matches so yeah it makes sense to do it in solid works yeah. um perfect and then i needed a way to you know what i'm going to print these out in six different sections and then glue them back together so i really needed a way to help locate everything back together so i did these circles right here which is the exact size of the dowel pins that i have access to okay. so i'm going to dowel pin this back together and it's going to all line up perfectly throw a couple uh a little bit of glue in there 
and I got I got myself a lure. Definitely making some of that progress. I mean, you got a few things you're going to do, like smoothing some edges up, um, you know. But uh, I'm thinking though, there's there's a bit of uh, differences between the way this looks and your original sketch. <laughs> That's right. I was hoping I was hoping you could help me jump back into X Shape and show me the workflow on how to update this SolidWorks file with you know a an edited X shape because I would love to go in, add some teeth, add some fins and add a little bit more life and character to this fishing lure. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll totally show you how to do that. It's super easy, you're gonna love it. Um, and I wanna see that too, cause that original sketch, it was really cool. Cause it, like you had those teeth and it was like an angry fish, right? So it's gonna scare the fish into your boat probably. Um, <laughs> That's but uh, but yeah, I mean, so what's cool is you've got that original, that's what we talked about before with that link. We just, we're just go, going to go into the X shape model, make those refinements that you talked about, and then we'll come back and we'll show you how that connects back to SolidWorks for an update. Okay, let's do it.